the Scottish borders. A land steeped in history. Good luck. And rivalry. Watch the ball go! With its own unique customs. Hey! men are men and sheep on the And twisting through these lands for 97 miles. The world famous Tweed. In my view, it's the best salmon fishing river in Scotland. Over eight months, we follow the River Guardians. I kind of look as if I've been arrested. <laughs> <laughs> we learn of old traditions. Every morning, I love getting up to go shoe horses. And embrace the new. It's just another part of life here. One, go! Come on in! As the modern borders redefines its identity, welcome to life along the river. Right, come on, let's go. Right, here we go, friends, here we go. Here we go. Oops, go and turn the alarm off quickly. The most important thing we have to do first, Aidan, what's that? Get the chef's petrol ready. Turn the coffee machine on. That's the one thing that keeps us going at this time of the morning. And it's the first thing I bought when I moved into the, into the unit, when we set up the school. Ruth Hinks is the UK World Chocolate Master. Ruth Hinks, ladies and gentlemen. She runs a chocolate factory and a cafe in the heart of Peebles. It's a family affair. Once a week, one of them will come with me. So on a Tuesday, Aidan will come, and on a Thursday, Delphine will come. And I just want them to see, you know, that you know, running a business is hard work. You need 185 grams of dark chocolate, so go and get the dark chocolate, Aidan. I want them to make sure that they can understand. They should work hard. <laughs> right, Aidan, that looks like it's too much. Yes, it is. Born in South Africa and raised in Australia, 10 years ago, Ruth made Peebles her home. Love brought me here. Oh, wow, well, yeah, love. <laughs> Does funny things to people. I'd worked in Scotland, 1995, up in Glenshee, and I always liked Scotland. So when I met a strapping Scottish lad, I wasn't kicking and screaming when he brought me back, and it's beautiful. And this is watery. Yeah, that's OK, because we're going to whisk the eggs up now. They are flat out. But as if that's not enough, Ruth's dream is to now open a chocolate school above their cafe next to the river. And the strapping Scottish lad responsible for overseeing Ruth's vision is husband David. Well, there's noise. That's always a good sign. Yeah, it's starting to take shape. The fridge has arrived last week. And after that, it's, uh, yeah, I hand over to Ruth and put my feet up for a while. The hard work's been done, but there's my effort. Everybody said to me at the start, why do you want to have a, a school or a shop in Peebles? And like, why not? You know, we have loads of chefs that come up from London to get out of the big, you know, the big smoke and they love it up here. And it's nice. Is this OK? Let's keep the nozzle down a bit. Delphine and Aidan appear to be made from the same mould as their mum. My little boy's already showing signs of uh, being a businessman because Delphine has piano lessons on a on a Tuesday, and last week he came in to make ginger nuts and he was trying to sell his biscuits to the piano teacher. That's all the profit sitting in the bottom there. If you don't take it all out, all no, that money... I want You're not allowed to lick it. Spring salmon are highly prized, with many clients paying thousands for the privilege to fish this river. But with it comes rules. No, what, what, what it is... It's not the law he's, he's, he's breaking, it's the code. He can't cast upstream. It should be downstream a square. Working day and night to protect salmon and the river's ecosystem are a team of water bailiffs. Today they've had a tip-off that some fishermen might be breaking the Tweed Code. I'm the superintendent of the River Tweed Commission, so I'm a, I'm a water bailiff in charge of the policing of the, the whole river. Melrose born and bred Eddie Weatherly leads the bailiff team. These Spring fish especially are a precious commodity. Um, we should take care of them. Um, and you know, many, many rivers already do nothing but catch and release. So we've, we've avoided having to do that um, just by having this conservation plan in place for so many years. Every week, Eddie's team patrols different stretches of the river, helping to enforce the rules. By and large, it does work. It just takes one or two bad examples sometimes that that just need to be reminded, and that's probably what today's exercise is going to be. Well, this, this is a video footage I took this morning. Bailiffs Alan and Kenny have been monitoring two fishermen. 
video footage of him standing at the bottom end of the cold at one spot, casting upstream, casting upstream. Yeah. I've stopped them before and they've said, you know, there's not, there's, it's not an illegal method to, ca to cast upstream. No, but it's, what he's doing is he's breaking the, he's breaking breaking the, the code. The code that they're signed up to. Yeah, yeah that's right. Casting upstream can be used to foul hook and harm the fish. Given the opportunity to say why he casts upstream, you may well make up your mind and say, well, actually, you're potentially trying to uh, foul hook fish. That's exactly what he's doing. And he's holding them back. That's what he's doing. But his method, he'll be casting upstream, but he'll probably just slow retrieving or something, is he? No, he's quite a, he's quite a quick retrieve. Is it? As soon as his line hits the water, he's, he's stripping in. Right. You okay. know? At the moment, let's just point out and be... It's about education first and see where he goes with it. We'll go away and see what he's got to say. Good. Right. <laughs> Up river in Melrose, it's the day before the world's oldest rugby sevens tournament. Overseeing final preparations for the big day is Jack Dunn. This does make us unique as the founders of sevens. A former player, club captain and president, Jack has seen it all when it comes to Melrose Rugby Club. I was born here, I've lived here all my life. About a, a few years at, at school and two years in India, I didn't see the first two tournaments after the war because it, it, you just can't get home from India for the weekend. Despite his travel issues, Jack has seen more tournaments than any other Melrose supporter. I've been at the sevens 75 times, so this is going to be 76. But I refereed 13 times, including three finals. My wife thinks I live here. It's not quite true. Tomorrow, Jack has the special role of greeting this year's officials, but today he needs to inspect the hallowed turf. Oh, well, the grounds, I mean, you see, he's got, he's got to mark the field. It just looks that much better. I'm going over to have a look, I'm going to have a look at his, his, his flowers just to see what he's done. It's probably the same as usual. Twelve miles downriver at Floor Stud, there was a new arrival in the night for stud manager David and his team. This is the morning after. She's, uh, she's passed her MOT from Tim. That's cool. So that's good news. So hopefully we'll get them out in a bit of sunshine and uh, a pick of grass, which would be just what the mayor wants as well. David's son Theo has come down to visit and he's aptly named the foal Sunshine. Do you want to go and give Sunshine a stroke quickly? Yeah, oh, come on then. You left over jump. I think it was probably a bit like Christmas for him coming down in the morning and finding a little foal. He was quite excited by that. Anything that takes over from dinosaurs, normally that's the first discussion in the morning, so. <laughs> Do you want to say well done, Dusty? Well done, Dusty. Oh, Daddy? Yes? Where do babies come from? Maybe she came out of her mummy, didn't she? This is a technical question, isn't it? <laughs> You've got to get ready for nursery, haven't you? Oh, got around that one quick enough. <laughs> Time to let Dusty and Sunshine stretch those legs. <laughs> She'll have a few, few weeks just in at night in the stable. And then uh, come sort of June time, she'll be out full time, just living outside with a group of mares and foals. And that's where they'll stay. There's a good chance she'll, she'll go to the sales next year. Um, and then hopefully she'll be racing at two. On the high street, changes are afoot at Tweedside Tackle. After 10 years, Tim and Caroline have been told the devastating news their lease cannot be renewed. We bought the business the 1st of June 2006, not the building, just the business, and we bought it with a 10-year lease, which naturally comes to an end at the end of this month. But help is at hand. Friend and neighbouring hotelier Margaret has offered them a property just across the street. Gwynny, I'm going to be five minutes. I'm just popping out to see Caroline at Tweedside. I always think when you do things like this, um, you, you have a, a, a new brush 
sweeping clean, you know, you have a good sort out. We get the keys today, so we get to go in, so we get to go in in a little while. Hell of a lot of work, yeah. yeah. Hell of a lot to do. Right. One okay. fish. What? How apt. That How appropriate. <laughs> Good luck. Thank All the best. You. Not long Brilliant. to go in this one, no? No. They have a month to pack up over 20,000 hooks, reels, rods and waders. At least the move is just a castaway. We'll probably just turn into a bit of a nightmare. So we'll manage it, won't we, Charlotte? Yep. Positive thinking. Positive thinking. Have you seen over there? No. Shall we go over and...? We could, yeah. Okay, yeah. Time to inspect the new premises and plan just how Tim fits in. Does he need to actually be at a desk desk or could he be just... He wants his desk. But he was wanting to go here? Yeah. Well, I think he wants to be at the counter and I don't think he would give up his desk. Stick him in the corner. Yeah, we'll stick him in the corner. <laughs> Down river, Tweed bailiffs Eddie, Alan and Kenny are approaching the suspected code breakers. There's not cavalry. We need to speak to you about something. The fishermen are reminded of the Tweed Code's casting rules. On the internet, on the Tweed, yeah. it shows you a chap illegal fishing, casting upstream with a fly and giving it there. That's illegal? Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. And then it shows them fishing correct. Now, mm -hmm. OK, I cast square and let it come round like a collie dog. Mm. Yeah. That must be legal. With a fly rod, it's legal. Yeah. Yeah. There's but, no... But it... we don't cast upstream with a fly. No. Oh, what we do, we spin it. It's because it's effective. Well, I'd like you to stop it, please. Right, cast across or cast down. OK. OK, yeah. yeah. Just but, let me come but, and fish. Yeah, well, nobody, do. nobody stop you fishing. It's the last thing we want to do is stop anybody fishing. We'd appreciate it very much if you would just moderate your... Nobody complains about you and you don't get us on your back. Yeah. You know what we're saying? Good. Thank Kenny, you very much. Kenny, I know exactly what you're saying. Thank you very much. I've been told the, the consequences of them doing it again is that uh, a letter goes to the beat owner. It may cost the beat owner money and it may also cost them their fishing. So all in all, it's, uh, it, was, uh, it was worthwhile, worthwhile coming down because there have been persistent calls about this type of fishing down here. So just by just by being seen here, I mean, they think the whole cavalry's turned up just for this one day, but uh, it's, uh, it'll have had an impact on them. Morning, sir. I'm still here. All good. <laughs> it's the morning of the Melrose Rugby Sevens. Thank you very much. Former player and referee Jack Dunn is inspecting the troops. Oh, who's this old man? Hello, old man. <laughs> <laughs> You'll call me an old man. <laughs> and it's Niall Godsmark's first home sevens playing for Melrose. Because this is the, the one tournament that happens every year. Um, it's where all the sevens began. And then you've got the teams from all over the world. So this year we have Belgium coming. Um, we've got a French development team coming as well. And then you've also got Edinburgh, one of the pro teams. Um, and then it's televised as well. And obviously, being the home team, you've got the spotlight on you. Good boy, good boy, good boy. Oh! oh it's a prestigious day for all involved in the club and a family affair. That's my little boy. Uh, the team mascot today, uh, our uh, water boy. In front of a home crowd, the stakes are high for manager John DL and his players. Good for them to get a bit of here and take in some of the ties uh, from the preliminary round. A team that's on at the moment, Watsonians, are they won Gala Shields uh, tournament last week, so they're one of the favourite teams this week, and uh, we would to meet them if we want to get round out to the other uh, rounds. It's a knockout tournament. There's no margin for error. Six minutes, boys. So the crowd pass and they'll show you a lot of support, Mark, all right? You mess about. It'll be negative for me. Come on, heads on this now. Heads on now. Heads on. <laughs> Well, it'll be all right. Just uh, be positive and then the nerves will go away. But yeah, just excited to really see how it goes. Hopefully come back with a win. That's all we need. It doesn't matter how we do it. That's all we want. just 
crossed from Scotland into England. So we're into alien country now. <laughs> River bailiff Eric Hastings has worked for the Tweed Commission for nearly 40 years. I am a Scotsman, but I was basically brought up in England. I was brought up in Derrick. And I now live back in Scotland. Over the last 50 years, traditional netting stations along the river have been purchased to help conserve declining salmon stocks. Today, Eric's heading to Paxton Netting Station to monitor their work. All fish that they catch under Scottish law, the fish are going to be tagged. So basically, we're just going to be watching just to make sure it's this sort of thing is happening. For hundreds of years, the river has been heavily fished. Of the once 30 netting stations, today only two remain. That's Father Thayne himself. <laughs> Paxton is run for conservation purposes by George Purvis and his family. Is this hard work? No. Nah, this is easy. When you've done it for 70 years, it comes easy. <laughs> his aim is to catch fish so they can be tagged and released, to help understand fish numbers in the river. This is us setting the net, and then we drop the staff, and we ease it down a bit, and then we go ashore. Hopefully there's a fish that swims into it. Seeing firsthand the decline in the river's fish stocks convinced George that the days of netting salmon to sell were over. I mean, I've made a lifetime, and my sons have made a lifetime, and my grandson was here. There's three generations here. But uh, it was, uh, I think it was time somebody made a stand and said, right, I think that's enough, you know, see if we can help the, help the river in some ways. You know, we are, we are protecting the species and the, the, the foundation are actually finding out more and more about what's happening in the river. You've, the more you find out, the more you can put management plans into place. There is rumours that there's a lot more fish, so that's good. And this year, it's the most smolts I've seen for about five years. That's the young salmon coming down going to the sea. I better go and do some work. I have to go and help the pullers net in. Since 5 a.m., Ruth has been hard at it. Right, let's go. She needs to deliver fresh supplies to her cafe and peoples, Coco Black. It's nice to just get out for five minutes as well, you know. Let the girls carry on with the production work. Morning, how are you? He's good, how are you today? I'm good. This is a bit I like. I like to be able to put them out in the, you know, in the counter and, and see the end of your, you know, your work. With the deadline for her new chocolate school fast approaching, Ruth calls for an emergency meeting with husband David. This needs to be a whole new demo table. And then here, this needs to, I think this needs to move down because I need more workspace over here. Let's get the school open, all right? Let's just get it open, work with it for a month and then see where we are. I oh, know, but I want it perfect now. <laughs> Let's just get it open. Okay, all right. It's been a long, hard slog. My poor husband has done a lot of late nights. You know it's getting close when the roof turns up. Because <laughs> <laughs> right? all the hard work's been done. You know, all the decisions have been made. Ruth turns up and, and has a discussion we've just had. <laughs> it's not far off, and, you know, I'm really excited. You know, when you look back five years ago, mm. when I came in and said, I want a shop <laughs> and a school. <laughs> and, you know, we finally, you know, got it all finished, you know. But I can't ask for anything more now that I've got my school there. No. My school, my shop. It's clear. Maybe a Michael Kors handbag. <laughs> huh? Just for mm -hmm. the sake of it. Yeah. Yeah, I'll send you the link. <laughs> come on, Ollie, must scrum. Big scrum, Nelly. The first match for Melrose. John's players are not playing to their potential. Come on! I would like to see them playing a wee bit better in the next, the next tie out. We, we got the win, which is like what we wanted, but to be honest, like, we made it very, very hard for ourselves. Like, personally, I didn't perform to what I could. That's us, that's us, let's go. Come on! Fixtures are coming thick and fast. The team will have to lift their game to overcome their next opponents, Watsonians, one of the tournament favourites. The Edinburgh side draw first blood. 
Watsonians are the best side that I've seen so far. Let's go, Sammy! Go on, Ali, make up for it, sir. But Melrose fight back. <laughs> the two teams slug it out. Pass the ball, though! That's our ball. Yes, Nelly. This is a chance. This is a chance. Spread it down, Sam, John! Let's go on, Sam! But in the dying minutes, Watsonians score twice, tying the match and delivering a body blow to Melrose. I knew that was coming. The match is on a knife edge. Extra time, sudden death, Bill. Sudden death. Can the pacemaker take it? Five minutes each way, but the first team that scores wins. Hold it! Yes. Come on, you the ball! Niall plays his heart out. To win, all they need to do is score. This is not enjoyable. <laughs> Melrose deliver for the home crowd, setting their sights on the semi finals. Takes the score to Watsonians 24, Melrose 29. It'll be one of the better ties of the day. Still not convinced in each other that we're good enough to be out there or no? And that's how you're playing. Get tighter. They shouldn't have been anywhere near us. At Paxton, George and Washer Bailiff Tommy are netting fish to help monitor dwindling fish numbers on the river. First one of the season. <laughs> now over to biologist Ronald to work his magic. Feeling the anaesthetic. Uh... Measure. I checked it for sea lice. And I checked it to see if there'd been any damage, you know, seal marks or bites or dolphin damage or anything like that. Ronald completes this process each time a fish is caught. Measured it. Took a scale sample, which tells us the age. Um, put a tag in it, and it's now in the recovery tank. And when it's semi-recovered, we'll get it back in the river. All right, here we go again, back up here again. Now we'll release it back in here. You see, that's the sea lice there. And it's a long-tailed sea lice. That means that this fish is very fresh. It's just come in on this tide. And it'll not take long to recover. She's kicking there. There she goes. The whole process takes about five minutes. Live to tell a tale further up the river. Upriver in Kelso, Tim and Caroline are attempting to move their tackle shop into their new premises across the road. Keeping on top of all the workmen is a hard task. Making sure that everyone who's here I don't lose them, because that's the trouble. As soon as another workman comes and you go to say hello, you turn around, the other one's vanished. So uh, at the moment, we've got the BT guy in the basement over the other side, so I need to go and check, but he's still there. What do you think, 28 gram silver, that type of thing? As Caroline keeps her workman in the basement, Tim looks after the customers. 20. When are you moving? We're in the process at the moment. Oh, yeah. It's all a bit manic at the but moment. At the moving the shop has given Tim plenty of time to reflect on the last 10 years. At certain times it's been really enjoyable and other times it's been hard work to keep going, just morally. But sometimes you just have to dig deep and take the ball and run with it. Yeah. Digging deep is what's needed right yeah. now. Oh no, right. Over to Caroline and Charlotte then. Right, you get your end and tip it From up. the bottom? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I can't see where I'm going, by the way. <laughs> I can turn around and I can see it across the road. It's, yeah, it's a bit Russian roulette, isn't it? <laughs> In Peebles, Ruth is preparing to teach a chocolate truffle class. Especially for you. Brilliant. Thank you. There we go. It's just another part of Ruth's hectic world. If I don't make chocolatiers out of everybody, 
And at least you'll see that my job's not a case of just melting chocolate and shoving it in a mould. <laughs> and because her new school isn't quite ready, she's squeezing classes into the factory. We're desperately trying to get out of here to move into our new school because we can't keep up with production and classes at the minute. It's all a little too much. I just get a bit distracted when I'm in the warehouse because I see loads of things that need to get done and I'll run off and do something and, you know, people just pop in and say hi and do a delivery and then I get someone to fix my machine and he's just stolen a piece of cake, so, you know. Right, OK. If she can open on time, Ruth hopes life will get easier. If we do a three-day class, it's mayhem. At least I think if in the new school I'll be left alone to, to just teach and I won't have my husband as well saying, can you come and do this, can you come and do that, <laughs> you know? I tell you, you've got to come. You've got to believe it, you've got to believe it, but you've got to be better. Come on, let's go get someone now. At Melrose, the home side are trailing by just two points to professional side Edinburgh in the semis. <laughs> They take it to the pros. Right, take the pick off. We need the ball. We need the ball. We need the ball. But Edinburgh show their class. Get out now, let's go, shit! Edinburgh try by Nathan Fowles. It's one score, it's one score. Melrose are still in it, but the clock is ticking. Come on, Melrose! Come on. Close to the try line, John wants it under the posts. They're trailing 24-26. With the last kick of the match, two points will keep the Melrose dream alive. Now, here we are. Look at Richard Moore. There he is, into the wind. You just had a glimpse there of the distances to kick. Here we go. Oh, it's wide. It's wide on the right. And that is full time. And final score, Melrose 24, Edinburgh Rugby 26. A brave fight. This could be one that just slipped away from them. Uh, really disappointed. I can't, there's nothing that we've got to say there now that's got to make it, because this is a real opportunity to win Melrose Sevens. I think it's been taken away for a wee bit. Yeah, when we were on it, we were really, really good. OK, and as I say, thanks for the effort for everybody again, but he's a look as a group and just goes, Jesus, we could have won this. It's a bit gutting, like, not getting through to, to a final and just losing out. That's, that's Sevens for you. It, you know, anyone can beat anyone, so... Next time on The River. It's the Peebles Tweed Love Festival. At last, Ruth opens her new school. It's been eight years I've been dreaming about it, and now it's finally here. <laughs> and there's drama at Kelso Races. Oh, well, Kate has not led up before, and she let him go a bit quick. <laughs> and that's next Monday at the same time. Well, Masood has some thinking to do in EastEnders next, and then a special tribute to Sir Terry Wogan. Children in Need Rocks for Terry, with a whole host of famous faces on stage at 8.30.